General McComb was seated at the head of the conference table, Dr. Duquesne at his foot. It had been several weeks since he had been awakened, and Alpha Squad was back from their latest excursion. Gaia was seated on the table cross-legged, eyes closed in bliss as holographic grass covered the table, waving jelly in a wind no one could hear or feel. Gaia. McComb spoke, she didn't reply. UTC PIAI Nova Gaia 2, respond. Her image blinked and she was facing him on the table, eyes open. Sorry, General. I let myself become distracted. It was McComb's turn to blink. Come again? I don't think Nova Class AIs could be distracted. Only if we let ourselves, General. It's been so long since I had something to do, with all the facilities brought back online. She closed her eyes again in bliss again. I'm helping again, not just watching over some barren rock waiting for my last power cell to die. She opened her eyes. I've written a subroutine that will auto-engage should I allow myself to be distracted again. It will alert me should any personnel need me. Good enough, Gaia. Thank you. Report on our guests. The Senator has been formally recalled pending impeachment, is the closest my translation suites can come up with. The Kakan government is profoundly apologetic and has offered enough supplies for your team to remain awake indefinitely. Even considering the difference in human and Kakan caloric needs, I drafted an affirmative and negative response pending your approval. Anything else? McComb asked, knowing what else was on the agenda. Yes, they're scheduled to reveal their initial archaeological finds, sans us of course, at the Galactic Council in a few weeks. They've allowed me to preview their announcement and I've queued it for yours and Dr. Duquesne's review. They only wish to reveal the evidence that we fought the Marlov to the galaxy. They are respecting our wishes to decline to name the planet they found the evidence on and our existence, and we still have time to communicate any changes or ask them to stop the reveal. I've looked over their release. I have seen no military reason we should ask them not to reveal what they've stated. Dr. Duquesne? She shook her head. I have no concerns. Give them the green light then, and tell them we'll take the supplies, McComb said. Then we can wake up more of our people, Toombs said. Dr. Duquesne frowned. We should at least wait until we get set supplies. Besides hydroponics, we'll be harvesting soon here at Prime. The sub-facilities are still a month or two out, but once they start producing... Agreed, McComb said. I don't think... Toombs began. Gaia cut him off. You really do, Dr. Toombs. Excuse me, he demanded, standing up. Gaia's hollow form spun to face him. I said you really think. Should we wake additional personnel, and a hydroponics collapse, and the Kakar not be able to deliver or refuse to deliver, everyone will have to go into stasis again due to lack of supplies. Not only that, living quarters are still not part of this facility's design. Corporal Mix and Dr. Duquesne have laid out some promising plans, but the needed equipment has to be built at a nanoforge, which requires rare materials. Do you have a store of steel allows, or other metals? You know I don't, but you... Are already stripping the ruins above using automatons, correct? This still takes time, Guy replied. And most of the facility's resources have been poured into the terraforming effort. System defense status, McComb said, interrupting and moving the meeting along in one fell swoop, causing Dr. Toombs to retake his seat. Mick spoke up. We've managed to visit Olgunge Omega Base's planet side. We've confirmed Guy's telemetry. The three bases hit during the fighting might as well be craters, but thanks to the fucking neutron bomb stripping the atmosphere away, all components and munitions left are in good condition. At Omega 2 1, we managed to coax an autoloader to life and powered a repair bay long enough to fix it. Guy's got to drag in other loaders to that bay, then stripping the bases down for spares and munitions planted inside. The one planet series I couldn't physically access, she said, somewhat pertinently. Alpha through Foxtrot, I could rearm and rebuild, but no. Couldn't land on the bloody planet with anything small enough for fine work needed to start repairs and rearm. Two, Dr. Duquesne said gently. We know, it's okay. Speaking of, McComb said. Where are we on planetary lift? Gaia spoke again. ZD Sub Facility 3 finished its diagnosis this morning. I tasked it to begin assembly of a suitable vehicle. Only preliminary tasks have begun. Plenty of time to change designs or models, General. I assume you want a Slepnir class? He nodded with a smile. The Slepnir class planetary assault shuttle was a UTC Marine Corps staple. If you looked at Earth's past for a contemporary, you wouldn't find it. For the Slepnir had the cargo and troop capacity of a CH-47 Chinook, the speed of an F-22 Raptor, the armor of an M1 Abrams main battle tank, and the firepower of the bastard love child between an AH-47 
64 Apache, and an A-10 Warthog. You assume correctly. Fast, heavily armed and armoured, and plenty of space for the crew and any tools you may need. Dr. Toons made a sound of disgust. Just what we need. McComb ignored him. Gaia, are there any civilian personnel who are rated to crew a sled there, or can be easily trained to military standards? Yes, General. Good. Cue their dossiers to mine and Dr. Duquesne's implants for review after this meeting, he said, staring hard at Dr. Toombs. Of course, sir, Guy said dutifully, and his implant shows two groups of files, the civilians he requested, and presumably military personnel to match. Supply status, he asked, finally. Mick spoke again. We're pretty far into the rations stored for initial wake-up. They were designed to assist once the terraforms were much farther along in the process. That being said, we've still got at least two months before we'll have to have hydroponics or the Kakan supplies. Thanks to that jackpot, we hit at Omega-1-9, he said, referring to the inact and fully stocked galley they'd found buried and safe from the neutron bomb, preserved in the wreckage of that base. That is consistent with logs, Guy added in. Gungnir Omega-1-9 was the first base hit. It was a long-range strike before the defensive line collapsed in space. No effort was made to salvage the base at the time. The other bases all but used their, a majority of their rations before the bomb went off, and anything not under several tons of rock was... She didn't finish, but her holographic grass turned to dust and floated away. Alright, so beyond planetary life and room to stretch our legs, any other pressing concerns? No one spoke up. Meeting adjourned. Return to your normal duties. Everyone stood and left. He noticed Corporal Mix waiting for Dr. Duquesne, who smiled and leaned close as he spoke to her. Gaia, he said over his implants. How is unit morale? Am I to exclude Dr. Toombs? She replied. And he could almost see her rolling her eyes at having to waste processor cycles on him. Macomb rolled his eyes. For now. Including the civilian personnel, save for Dr. Toombs then. Morale is good. It's not high, but it's not low. Elaborate. General, everyone they knew is dead or in stasis. They're coming together in an esprit de corps, but they're not ready to start dancing and singing. They're determined to finish bringing all facilities online and secure the planet once again. And Tombs? He asked. Malcontented. He is not happy with you being in charge. In fact, now that the ZT sub-facilities are online, he has no skills that will be of use in repairing any Gungnir facilities. I strongly suggest you and Dr. Duquesne place him back in stasis. She said. Wait one... I'm disconnecting my emotional subroutines to ensure the recommendation is local. There was a brief pause, then Gaia spoke again, her voice flat and emotionless. The grass beneath her holographic feet disappeared. Running decision through logic tree. Yes, logic agrees. It should be placed back in stasis, as he has no skills or clearance for the Gungnir facilities. I'll speak with Dr. Duquesne about it. I'm not going to go around shoving people back into stasis just because they're ourselves who don't like the military. Gaia's grass came back and her voice was warm again. I mean, I would, she teased her emotional subroutines clearly back online. But in all seriousness, General, with nothing to do, his malcontent will only fester and begin to affect the rest of the unit, military and civilian alike. What about interpersonal relations between Alpha Squad and the civilians? Gaia smiled. While no one else is as close as Dr. Duquesne and Corporal Mix are becoming, they are all, save for Dr. Toombs, getting along well. Lance Corporal Jones used his personal nanoforge last week's cycle on a poker set, and a nightly game has been ongoing since then. Dr. Harris used hers on some cosmetics and an air hammer. Then Star Sergeant Hill scissored out a rock pool above a reactor line, filled it with water, and treated all the ladies to a spa day. Unit cohesion is not a problem. 